Hey everyone, in this video, I want to show you real quick how to make this responsive navigation menu in perspective that uses the advanced style sheet feature that was introduced in version 8.1.22. As you can see, there's a nice transition hovering my cursor over each of these elements and the menu itself. But in addition, this menu works on mobile by just clicking on and off of the menu and each of the sections. So without any further ado, let's open up the designer and see how it works. All right, here in the designer, you can see I have this folder called nav in my views, and there's three views inside of that, nav, nav link, and nav section. And this nav view is set up as my dock on the shared settings of the page configuration. Uh, and you can see I'm using content, push, and size 70 there. So on the view itself, I have a style class on the root container called nav. And then all of the sections and links are being configured in this flex repeater. So the path is using nav section. And then each instance is passing into that view uh, parameters uh, here, icon, items, label, and target. And each item also has a label and a target. I've set the direction to column. I've unchecked these default width and height properties. And then uh, I set the overflow to hidden. And then my element position and the flex repeaters position are both set to grow zero, shrink zero, and basis auto. Now let's take a look at the nav section view. So in this view, first off, you'll see those incoming parameters. But on the root container, I have a style class called nav section, and the overflow is set to hidden. Then I have a flex container here. This flex container has a style class called nav section header. Its overflow is also set to hidden. And there's an on click event here that's calling this target parameter and passing it in as the page for this uh, system perspective navigate function. Then inside the flex container, I have an icon and that path property is just bound to the incoming icon parameter. This label has a style class of nav link and the text property is bound to the incoming uh, label parameter. And then this flex container is just containing my arrow icon and I'm doing it this way so that I can um, just easily style this icon independently of the other icon. This flex container has a style class called nav section arrow. Then for this flex repeater, Everything's configured the same in terms of the position, the element position, this overflow being hidden, uh, these defaults turned off in direction column. Uh, it's using nav link for the path, and then instances is bound to the incoming item parameter. Now let's look at nav link. So on nav link, you'll see there's those incoming parameters. On the root container here, I have a style class called nav link. And on this label component, I have my text property bound to the incoming label parameter and the same on click event that calls the target parameter um, in the system perspective navigate function. All right, now let's take a look at the style sheet itself and see how this thing actually works. Starting from the top, you can see I'm overriding the width on this class called docked view left. Um, then I have my style class, my custom style class, nav, but it's prefixed with PSC dash. And all your custom style classes have to be prefixed this way when you're working directly with style sheets. You'll notice that on the component, I just put nav, but the style sheet has this entire block in order to style it. So the default style for nav is going to be width 70. And then there's this transition on the width uh, that takes 0.2 seconds and uses this method here. So then I have my nav section. And by default, it's going to have a max height at 40 pixels and a color uh, that's this neutral 70 variable. And then it also has a transition on the max height and the color. Then I'm styling both of these classes the same way, the nav section arrow and the nav link. By default, they're gonna have zero opacity 
and a neutral 70 color. And then I'm uh, setting up my transitions on opacity, color, and this other property, transform. Now for the hover events, on the navigation menu, when I'm hovering over that, I want the width to become 250 pixels. Also, I want each of the nav section arrows and nav links to become visible. So opacity one when I'm hovering over the nav. Then when I'm hovering over the nav section here, I want the max height to grow. I want it to grow as much as it needs to. So I set that max height pretty high. I'm changing the color here to this call to action color. And then I um, once again added in this transition that's going to help make the uh, expanding and collapsing of that section a really smooth transition. When I'm hovering over the nav section, I want the nav link inside of the nav section header to stay this um, uh, call to action color as long as I'm hovering over the nav section. And then anytime I'm hovering over a nav link as well, I want this uh, color to be the call to action color. And lastly, uh, as I'm hovering over a nav section, I want the nav section arrow to transform and to rotate by 90 degrees. And that's all there is to it. Uh, hopefully you found this video helpful or interesting. If you have any questions or ideas for future videos, just leave a comment below. And if you like this video, if you'd like to see more like it, subscribe to the channel. We will put out more videos. Uh, and lastly, if you would just want to play around with this resource, check it out. Uh, we're going to put it on the Ignition Exchange so you can download it for free and try it out. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.